Two of Africa's most powerful carnivores reign over the savanna. Lions rely on strength and teamwork to hunt prey no other predator can catch. While hyenas are also masterful hunters, they're quick to take advantage of other opportunities. Their powerful jaws slice through hide and bone with ease. Both species have large families to feed, creating a cycle of life and death on the savanna. Others thrive on their leftovers. This specialized and sometimes surprising cast of scavengers relies on lions and hyenas for survival. At the very top of Africa's food chain is the lion, king of beasts. These apex predators possess power and poise. They hunt some of Africa's biggest and most dangerous animals and dominate other carnivores in the race to secure enough food to survive. There are few things more impressive than a lioness on the hunt. She stalks her target undetected. before launching the attack. The arrival of another pride member signals the end for the zebra. Lions are revered the world over as regal beasts, and they thrive across the savanna in large, close-knit families. While the lion is revered, the hyena is mocked. These masterful opportunists are considered the clowns of the African bush. Viewed by many as manic and mean, their reputation precedes them. But it's ill-deserved. Though known as scavengers, they are actually accomplished hunters, some killing as much as 95% of their food. Like lions, hyenas also live in highly social and strictly organized societies. But what makes them special is their ability to take advantage of resources other animals can't.
Hyenas and lions live lives with a delicate mix of competition and cooperation. The animals they kill don't only support the pride and clan, they're a source of sustenance for a host of other creatures, large and small. These scavengers are heavily reliant on these top two predators for survival, building their lives from the leftovers. Pride relaxes during the heat of the day. While they rest, there's plenty of time for play and bonding. Cubs have a charmed upbringing, watched over by the pride's adults. They'll rely on their family for protection and food until they're around 16 months old. Their mother has spent her whole life living with her female relatives in this pride and she'll get important help from her sisters, the cubs' aunts, in raising them. The pride's lionesses suckle one another's cubs helping to share the burden of raising the young family. While they don't have a breeding season, reproduction is often synchronized within a pride. Lionesses give birth to litters of between one and four cubs at roughly the same time. This means that all of the cubs are similar sizes avoiding competition at feeding time, giving everyone an equal chance at survival. While the cubs begin to eat meat at just over two months old, they will continue to suckle to the age of six months before being weaned. For the spotted hyena pup, life is very different. She lives in a clan where females hold higher ranks than males. Weighing around 70 kilograms, the pup's mother is a full 10 kilograms larger than any male. the pup relishes any chance to explore the outside world. Unlike lions, when the clan goes out to hunt, there are no babysitters to stay back and watch over the pups. So they're left behind at the den, hidden underground. The young hyena was born with well-developed teeth. But for now, she lives exclusively on her mother's milk and will do so until she's almost nine months old. It's a potent formula. 
hyena milk has the highest protein content of any terrestrial carnivore. Unlike in lion prides, her mother receives no help in suckling or raising the youngster. And without synchronized breeding, hyena packs often include young of varying ages. As a result, the pup has a number of older cousins. These juveniles already have most of their first layer of spotty coat, with only their legs retaining the natal black. And they're old enough to join the clan on foraging trips. Females remain with the clan for life but males will leave when they reach sexual maturity in a year or two. When they'll strike out to find mating opportunities in another clan. The female lion cubs will spend their entire lives in this pride. But like the male hyenas, their brothers will have to leave in their third year to seek out a pride of their own. They'll have to fight other males for control. And these pride takeovers can have a gruesome result. Incoming males will kill the existing cubs of a pride in order to bring the females back into heat. Cubs can only survive if the pride's females work with the resident males to help win the battle and prevent a takeover. The biggest danger to lion cubs is the vicious disposition of adult males muscling in on their pride. Throughout the savannah, even the largest and most majestic animals are vulnerable, sometimes from their own kind. Rhino bulls use their massive horns in fights for territories, and these can be deadly. This bull was no match for his opponent, which pursued him when he turned to flee. The scrapes on his skin show where he was repeatedly stabbed until the deadly blow was dealt, which pierced the skin at his foreleg. Like all animals, even the giants of the savannah must eventually die. And when they do, they present a perfect opportunity for the spotted hyenas to make the most of their skill set. An incredibly acute sense of smell and hearing means they're often the first to arrive at a kill. 
a young male approaches cautiously. Despite the meal on offer, this is a dangerous place. Lions also have a strong sense of smell and are not above scavenging. But the coast is clear. Other clan members quickly arrive. The raised tails of two females show confidence and excitement. And they waste no time in tucking into the rhino's thick hide. Their higher rank means they're in first for the best pickings. The young male respectfully waits his turn. picking off scraps when he can. <laughs> the hyena's formidable cheek teeth, or carnassials, enable them to slice through even the toughest of hides. and they don't come much tougher than a rhino's. Eventually they gain access to the fatty flesh below. The hyena's skills haven't gone unnoticed. While many spend their lives actively avoiding lions and hyenas, Others seek them out. The vultures have followed the hyena in the hope of being led to a kill. But they must wait their turn. So must the male hyena that first found the carcass. He's an outcast, born into another clan which he left around the age of three. After a long process of assimilation, the group finally accepted him. But as a male, he ranks lower than all adult females. And because he wasn't born into this clan, he also ranks lower than all the males who were. The only creatures he holds rank over are the onlooking vultures. Despite having done all the hard work to find the meal, while the females are around, he's unwilling to challenge for a prime place on the kill. The rhino carcass is an unusual and lucky find for the family and will feed them for days. Weighing over a ton, the giant herbivore is part of a group of the savannah's largest and most powerful animals all of which face no risk of predation. This group of heavyweights includes rhinos, hippos, land mammals of all, African elephants. At five tons, this elephant was well above the one-ton threshold of safety and wasn't at risk of predation. But even its imposing size can't protect it from old age. 
The lion pride fed first, then the hyenas took what they wanted. Now it's left to the rest. A black-backed jackal is reliant on lions and hyenas to open up a carcass of this size. While they're adept at hunting for themselves, jackals will take any chance to scavenge. And the carcass presents an opportunity for a free meal. Jackals live in monogamous breeding pairs and have no wider social structure, but will gather in numbers around a source of food. Despite the elephant's desiccated appearance, the remains still have valuable nutrients to offer. Though this elephant's massive bulk kept it safe from predation, for everything weighing less than a ton, the threat from the savannah's hunters is ever present. And none is more threatening than the lion. One of the pride's lionesses has killed a warthog. And now, at over two months old, these cubs are getting one of their first tastes of meat. Lion's leftovers come in two guises. Kills they intentionally hunted like the warthog, and carcasses they stumble across like the elephant. Animals of similar weight to the warthog make up more than half of the diet of most of the savannah's predators. Lions can go for these bite-sized snacks, but they also have the advantage of incredible strength and the ability to launch coordinated attacks on larger animals like this buffalo. Some prides get as much as 70% of their sustenance from animals heavier than 300 kilograms, including zebra, giraffe, and buffalo. Huge males are slower than females and often don't join in the hunts for more agile prey, earning them the undeserved stereotype of lazy freeloaders. When it comes to bringing down an 800 kilogram buffalo, there's no substitute for brute strength. And lone males are responsible for a substantial proportion of the buffalo killed on the savannah. Unable to finish the entire animal by himself, the pride's alpha is happy to share with some of the lionesses. family can devour an impala in one sitting, an adult buffalo takes some eating.
As evening sets in, the jackals begin to move. The male and female of the monogamous pair head out to forage separately. But they stay in contact via haunting calls. They know that lions operate most efficiently at night and that the coming darkness increases their chance of scavenging a meal. After eating its fill, the pride has left the buffalo carcass unguarded, opening the door for the male jackal. And he's not alone. The latecomer isn't his mate, but another male from a neighboring territory. He may have smelt the carcass from as much as a kilometer downwind, following the scent of opportunity to its source. But despite the huge carcass, the first male isn't in the mood to share. There's far more meat than the jackal can eat here. But life on the African savanna is unpredictable and they must take full advantage of every opportunity. Once he's full, he'll stash pieces of meat in hiding places to return to in the coming days. But he must work quickly. The rightful owner of the carcass calls in the rest of the pride. Now is not the time to be brave. Soon enough, they've reclaimed the kill. Unlike hyenas, mature males dominate access to food in the lion pride. But the alpha is still full. And there's enough here for the females and adolescents to share in peace. With so many predators operating under the cover of darkness, first light reveals many casualties and opportunities. In the night, a young blessbok has been devoured. The lions have already done a good job of gleaning from the carcass almost all the available goodness. but there are still scraps to be had. And a most unlikely group of visitors arrives to investigate. A family of warthogs. Warthogs are the only pigs adapted to grazing in savanna or grassland habitats, subsisting almost entirely on grasses and roots but they'll occasionally supplement this diet 
with scraps of carrion. The piglets seem more inquisitive than hungry. And soon enough, they return to their favored food. On another day, these warthogs might have fallen prey to the lions. But today they get a chance to see life from the scavenger's perspective. Lions seldom leave a carcass before they're satisfied. But there are other smaller predators on the savannah, such as leopards and cheetahs, which will occasionally abandon their kill if startled. This presents even greater opportunity for others if they can beat the hyenas to the spoils. These hooded vultures are taking full advantage of an impala carcass killed then abandoned by a leopard. They're smaller than many other vultures and leave their roost around an hour earlier than other species in the morning. For these two, it's a case of the early bird catches the kill. Hooded vultures are often the first to arrive at a carcass, avoiding competition with their bigger, more powerful cousins. They use their sharp, slender beaks to eat as much as they can from the kill, eating up to 300 grams of food per day. Their early start and keen eyesight has paid off. But the vultures aren't the only opportunists waiting to beat the hyenas and jackals to unguarded spoils. An army from the undergrowth is quick to take full advantage of a fresh waterbuck carcass. Dung beetles are famous for their strategy of rolling balls of dung cross-country to stash safe below ground. But they're also one of the first to arrive at a kill, where they make the most of the waterbuck's partially digested stomach contents. Multiple species of different sizes all descend to exploit the resource. But they're not just here for dung. Many beetles will also eat the fat and meat of the carcass itself. And like the jackal, some will even stash parts in burrows beneath the ground. The dung beetles' exceptional sense receptors on club-like antennae mean they're often among the first to arrive on a fresh carcass. Given time, they'll be surrounded by an abundance of insect life. This wildebeest carcass fed a small pride of lions, as well as numerous large scavengers. But surprisingly, it's at this very late stage that it provides for the biggest variety of life. All that's left is a thin layer of skin, hair, and sinewy flesh. And an insect army has descended to take care of the very last scraps. This is an ideal nursery for maggots, and flies will lay masses of eggs while feeding. Beetles of various species abound, feeding on the final pickings that the carcass has to offer. 
they peel away layers of hair to get to the connective tissue beneath. And in time, the carcass is polished all but clean. The work of the lions has provided opportunities to feed for a huge abundance and variety of life, big and small. Jackals, vultures, warthogs, and even beetles all benefit. While many have to rush to take advantage of the opportunities presented by lions and hyenas, the world's most infamous scavengers require patience to get a meal. <laughs> the hungry, white-backed vultures have been waiting for their chance to feed on the rhino carcass for over a day now. A spotted hyena can eat a third of its own body weight in a single sitting, enough to last it a week. And they aren't in a hurry to leave. The once bulbous rhino has been dramatically reduced. Its chewed through hip bone stands as testament to the incredible jaw strength and crushing premolars of the hyenas. With less meat left on the carcass, competition is rife. The approach of the alpha female sends the others running. Her swollen stomach is a sign she's already full, but she continues to take as much as she can. While this may seem unnecessary, it's driven by her instinct to reproduce. The more she eats, the more milk she can produce, and the shorter she can go between pregnancies. This results in her successfully raising up to five times as many pups as lower-ranking females. But she'll have no help in feeding her young, so it's imperative for her that she makes the most of every opportunity to feed. Eventually satisfied, the alpha female and high-ranking members of the clan leave the young male finally gets his chance to feed on the kill he found. He doesn't waste any time and dives straight in, deciding on a more direct approach. But with only one hyena left, the vultures sense their opportunity. Sometimes even the most powerful carnivores buckle under the weight of pressure from other scavengers. But an empty stomach drives him to return. He's not prepared to give up his prize just yet. Lacking the slicing teeth of the hyenas, the vultures can't pierce the rhino's skin, which means the young male only needs to defend the open side of the carcass. Eventually, he decides enough is enough 
and the frenzy begins. At five and a half kilograms, the white-backed vultures can gobble a fifth of their weight in meat in less than five minutes. Unlike the hyenas and jackals, vultures seldom hunt for themselves, relying mostly on carrion for their food. And these typically green-necked immatures will have to learn quickly how to get their share in the maelstrom. But they should take care. In their frenzied feeding, white-backed vultures will occasionally get trapped deep inside the carcass and face the grisly end of being eaten alive by their peers. A much larger cape vulture enters the fray weighing as much as nine and a half kilograms. Its neck is flushed red with excitement. Normally, cape vultures would dominate the white-backed, using their larger size to intimidate them. But the sea of feathers is impenetrable, even to the bigger birds. Together, the vultures will make short work of the carcass, taking whatever the hyenas have left behind. Once the rhino carcass has been exhausted, many of the vultures will resume one of their tried and tested food-finding strategies. Following the savannah's two top carnivores. Between lucky finds and patience, they'll rely largely on the savannah's apex predators to keep them fed. The lion pride and the hyena clan occupy the top spots on Africa's food chain. Motivated by the constant struggle to secure enough for themselves and their families, they take down and open up prey too big for most other predators to tackle. So doing, they provide opportunities for a host of life forms occupying less glamorous positions in the cycle of life. On the African savanna, the life of some depends on the death of others. In a cycle driven by predators and dependent on prey, none are more important than the two most powerful carnivores. Bringing down big game, untouchable by others. And opening access to resources that only the natural workings of time can provide.
these social creatures do all they can for the betterment of their family. And in so doing, they unwittingly provide for an abundance of life, thriving on the results of their labor.